Hello, I'm Rebecca de Mendonca. Welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to do a demonstration of a little girl in the sunshine fishing um, and it's one of the projects from my book Pastels for the Absolute Beginner. Now by the time you get onto this project, if you've been looking through the book, you'll have already gained quite a lot of experience and confidence with using soft pastels. If you have any questions about anything I'm doing today or about the pastels that I use or pastel courses or videos, please take a look at my website. There's lots of information on there and you can always contact me through there. I'm always happy to answer questions. Now to start with, I'm working on a Windsor paper made by Windsor & Newton. It's a warm colour, a kind of raw sienna colour. You don't need to use exactly this surface um, or exactly this colour, but whatever you do use, try to make sure it's a pastel surface and it's a warm mid-tone colour. So um, it's the warmth will mean that the blues of the sea will really jump off and it also makes doing the skin tones a lot easier. So let's have a look at um, the pastels that I'm going to be using and some more of the things that you can see in the book. Right, let's, so let's quickly just have a look at the pastels that we're going to be using. So I've got my box of unison pastels mostly here. Um, this is just an old um, empty box that I really like to keep a box for each painting I'm going to be working on to keep them together. So they don't. you don't have to use exactly the colours I've got here, but Approximately, you need um, some greeny blues, sort of going into turquoises for the sea. Um, this one is broken, which I will explain later. Um, some colours for Yasmin's clothes, some beachy colours. You need a good light, so that's my lightest light. This and the brown and my darkest dark. Um, and some colours for the sky. And then, as far as um, flesh colours go, um, I'm going to be using Conte crayons and a little bit of the pastel pencils. This, believe it or not, is just a pencil rubber, but nothing stays very clean in my studio. Um, and this is just a bit of plastic that I'll be using just to scrape off my layers, but I'll explain that as we go along. Um, it's a really good idea to test your colours out on the colour paper that you're going to be using because they will look very different on a lighter or a darker paper um, or a warmer or a cooler colour. Um, I use my scalpel for um, sharpening with pastel pencil. Uh, the ruler is for drawing the um, fishing net and, um, and this is a really important cup of tea. So I'll just give you a quick introduction to the book to show you how um, much you'll have kind of read about by the time you get onto this project. So there's lots about different types of materials, setting up your workspace. I think it's really important that people focus on their drawing to start with and we can do that a lot easier with black and white before we go into colour. And then there's some um, quite a lot about um, uh, pastel techniques and then how we can apply those to different subject matter, um, hatching, um, softening, smudging, um, and then I think it's really important to, to look at how you vary your pressure um, and how the pressure that you use and the varied mark making that you use can then lead to much more um, interesting and work that has got life in it. Um, and then there's colour, um, um, different surfaces, and then going on to landscape and some projects to kind of take you through rocks and hills and sea and water, um, skies. Life in your paintings is a, about um, animals and people in your work and this was the main bit I wanted to show you. How if we can get an idea of proportions and a way of drawing figures out with a shorthand looking at angles of limbs and the curve of the spine we can then start to draw our figures with more confidence and then put them in pictures and then it leads up to the project that we're, um, we're about to do now. And there's, there's a lot more about portraits um, as well as um, animals. So I do hope you enjoy it, but I just wanted you to know that by the time we get onto the project we're about to do, you'll have had to go at quite a lot of other things first. Right, so let's get started. You need to know that I'm recording this in my studio and we can probably hear the birds singing outside but hopefully it's not going to rain today. The reference is not brilliant um, so some of this is coming from my memory of, um, of what Yasmin is like and although the pose is quite stable here 
Can you see how there's a little bit of a turn to her shoulders here? This shoulder's lower than that one. That negative space there is smaller than this. Her ear there is slightly higher. Little quirky things like that matter a lot with pictures of, um, of people, particularly children. Um, anyway, let's get started with um, some of these blue violets. This is, this is a unison pastel blue violet, which is a colour I tend to use for the sky rather than the greeny blues that I'm going to use for the sea and I'm putting these on with quite broad strokes I'm holding the pastel these are quite well worn pastels you see I'm holding it in the middle I've got a half stick holding it in the middle and I'm using it on that um, that broad side to make some nice some nice broad marks put a little bit more of the darker colour in the, the clip's getting in the way slightly but I can always smudge that out with my fingers if I do want to go all the way to the top so that's those done now let's get on to the sea now I've got several of these turquoisey colours and I'm going to start with a dark one which is a bit scary um, but I know that I can go over it and I like the fact with sea that you can kind of see the depth of the darker blue underneath um, I have of course changed um, changed my background from the original photograph and it's it's quite a good idea if you do that sort of thing to find some reference of the scene that you are going to put your figure in so that you're not just inventing inventing it now as I spent quite a lot of time drawing this out I'm going to go around it quite carefully because this, this is a pretty blunt instrument and this is a very delicate little drawing. But what I have done, I said I was going to explain about this, I've broken a bit off this. I just snapped it off with my finger. And what that gives me is it gives me sharper edges on this one and it also gives me a little shard to use here. And I don't want to draw a line and then colour it in, but in places I can... I can use I can use that shard where I need a bit more detail and it's going to come in very useful a bit later on. Now because I don't have a lot of um, internet uh, bandwidth where I live I'm going to just fast forward some of these bits. Now this is quite a you have to be quite careful with this process um, because you don't want to ruin your drawing that you did earlier but I don't know whether you can see what I'm doing particularly down this side is I'm going back to the original end of the pastel I'm using it on its side but I'm just leaning so I'm still putting it on like this but I'm just leaning slightly on that edge and that actually gives me the ability to have a kind of a nice broad area that I've pastelled in, but I've got quite a clean edge around the figure. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just making sure that I get this little bit of shadow in, because without that shadow, she's not gonna be grounded. She's just gonna be floating in a bit of a space. And I, I have gone round her in most places, but I'm not going to colour the whole thing in. I'm going to let some of this colour show through. Um, as you can see, my hands are, hands are getting pastel beautifully. Right, so now I've got my lighter, my lighter turquoise. I'm just going to soften out the horizon by giving it a bit of a smudge, because that will give it a bit of a sense of distance. And I love the way you, you get that bit of darker, um, darker turquoisey colour on the horizon um, when you're looking at the sea. Now this, can you see immediately how it's going over that darker colour and starting to blend with it, even though I've only actually smudged it up here. Now I'm going to use these lights and darks to um, bring out the figure. So I know on the figure that I'm going to have light down this side. So I'm probably going to leave quite a lot of the dark over here at the moment. Um, 
and put some more of my light over this side. Obviously you need to have some sort of continuity between the two sides, but it's amazing how much you can jiggle around these colors, just start to change them to bring out what you want the viewer to look for in the, the piece. So you can see in places I'm smudging it and in places I'm just leaving it and in other places I'm leaving the the paper coming through. There is quite a texture to this paper but I I kind of don't mind this because this is quite a loose sketchy piece so it's quite nice to have that bit of texture. Now you can see I'm not making all my marks go horizontally because again I want this to be a painting rather than a direct copy of a photograph. Now you can see here how I'm starting to get some blue smudges onto her skin areas but I'm not going to worry too much about that because if you remember I have my secret weapon of a rubber waiting to now be I've used. Got a, um, a lighter, a lighter one again. And what I'm going to do with this is, um, it's not really, it, it is a bit of a longer stick, but that, that it, I could still do this with a, with a half stick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it in the middle again, but I'm going to make, make the marks with a bit of a, bit of an edge. Um, and I'm going to give those horizontal marks a bit of a jiggle as I do them. Because that starts to kind of give a feeling of the, the light catching on the water. Now, I'm not bothered about any of this background being particularly um, defined because what I really care about here is the little girl. And the, um, the background is just a foil to bring her out. And even though I'm changing the, um, the background to what's in, and the colors to what's in my, my reference, I am going to stick with the quality of light, which is actually really lovely. So there's quite a lot of light down this area here. So I'm bringing a bit more of that down. And now I'm gonna get an even lighter one. Now, I don't know whether you're noticing, but I'm using, I'm, I'm starting to slightly change the way I make my marks with each of these colors I put on. And part of the reason for that is because um, I've got more layers of pastel on the surface. So the pastel behaves differently when it goes onto the surface. Now I'm just gonna get a little bit of light because what I want to do is get a little bit of light catching on the water and a little bit through here. So this is a cream. Right, so that's some of my light catching on the water. And I really love the way this color paper is starting to work as the undercolor for her skin tones. Um, it's a really nice colour, partly because the, the blues jump off it, but partly because um, she has dark skin. It makes her, gives her a lovely glow. It also works as a, as a lovely undercolour for people with really white skin. Um, I think this is, this is one I've, I didn't have on my list, this slightly darker. Um, sandy colour. Right, so I've got some sand, I've got my little bit of light on the water, um, and I've also got incredibly blue hands. So what I'm going to do now is step away, go and wash my hands, and then come back and review what I've come done. back with clean hands, and I've also moved the camera in slightly so that hopefully you get more of a chance to see what I'm doing on the figure. Now I'm taking my bit of plastic, which we call refreshers at the New Pastel School, but you can easily make these yourself out of a bit of old packaging. And you can see what I did was I've, I've just 
um, basically scraped off the excess pigment that had got onto the places where I didn't want it. Um, and then I'm just with this pencil rubber, I'm just rubbing out those, um, some of those dirty bits, particularly on the skin tone areas because blue's not a good colour to mix with skin tones. It'll make her look very dirty. Um, but I'll leave some of it on the top because there's blue, going to be blues there anyway. So now I'm going to look at, I'm taking my cream um, and I'm going to put the lights in because to me this picture is about, um, it's about the lovely light hitting her. So I'm going to this time use the pastel on its end but as you can see it's still quite a chunky pastel and I'm literally looking at my um, reference so I'm just going to bring the reference in again and show you. I'm looking at the where the lights are on the reference. And as I do this, I'm actually looking at my reference quite carefully because I want to get the... If you want a picture to look like somebody, the little details of the body language are actually really important. And because she's got some... Um, because she's mixed race, she's she's got um, quite kind of curly hair, and I'm twiddling my pastel around. I'm changing the sort of marks that I make to get a feeling of the texture of her hair, and then I'm literally looking very carefully at the way the light falls, and things like the angle of the arm, the angle of the shoulder. When you're drawing people, you really have, to, you do have to look carefully, whether you're drawing them from photographs or from life. Slight differences actually make quite a big difference. And I also am very conscious that I'm working from a photograph which is two dimensional and I want to, um, I want to make her look like a really three-dimensional person. There's a bit of light catching on there. So as I'm drawing basically the light now on the folds of the fabric, I'm twisting and turning my pastel because I want to get a feeling that this is a round, you know, there's curves to this, to these clothes as they curve round her, her form. Bit of light catching down there. There will be some light catching round around here as well, but not much. So I'm not pressing very hard here, but I've pressed very hard here. And then there's some coming down the side of her trousers. Now folds in clothes are um, a great chance to give that feeling of the curve round uh, where, the, where the fabric just curves round her legs here and again I'm, I'm not putting much pressure on I'm using that pastel really quite lightly and there are there are little places where I want to emphasize it even though it might not be emphasized on the photograph one of them is that little curve there as her sleeve comes down because that's it's quite an important I call them my little landmarks um, they're quite important for kind of telling you about the form because what we're doing is we're just using a few marks to hint at the form so we've got to make sure that we put them in the right place and that they really do their job a little bit of light as the leg calf of her leg curls around there a little tiny bit on that side but not much again so again i've pressed harder down here i've pressed less hard so on that side now i'm not going to go for huge detail in these areas yet. I'm just going to come and put some of the colour into her top. So I've got my lighter lilac -y colour here. And I'm, it's only a little, it's a little bit. If you drop your pastels and you break them, these little bits come in very useful when you're doing quite detailed work. Because this is, quite, for me, this is a small, this is a very small little picture. 
so I don't want to be using a whole pastel stick and this is great for the variety of marks that I can make. Now I'm leaving, see I'm putting it on, it's lovely and creamy this one the way it goes on, but I'm leaving some of the, um, the colour of the paper showing through. I'm just going to pop a little bit down here as well. Um, so that there's a bit of a unity in the picture um, and I might even put a little bit up here or a little bit down down here I don't want to put any in her skin tones because it's not quite the sort the right sort of the right sort of color okay so now I've got a darker lilac and when I was saying that you don't really need the same colours, you, you, you don't need to do this in lilac at all. I, you know, if you've got other colours that you really like, what's important is you have a light, a medium and a dark. So my cream is counting as the light. And this is my darker lilac. Now I'm going to want to put a bit more light in down here, but I'm not too worried because I, I can go over it. So that'll do for that. And now I want to put some some of the blue in for her for her trousers, but I'm actually using the same blue that I used up there. And again, I'm twisting and turning it as I put it on because I want to get a sense of how our clothes are curling curving around the body. And I'm, gonna, I'm now going to hatch a bit of that into there just to get a little bit of um, reflective colour and the colours working together. Now if you remember I broke the, um, the darker turquoise and now this little shard that I've got here which has got, I don't know whether you can see that, it's got a sharper, a sharper edge on it. You don't need a point with pastels, you just need an edge. But I can now make little fine drawing marks with that to um, just show the the edge of her um, top and where her arms coming in and I'm just kind of making a few little marks to get a little bit of that dark showing up there as well and I'm just touching it slightly I'm not really smudging it I'm just basically kind of giving it a little bit of a touch and a little bit of dark there as well and then I can use it to just draw a little bit of shadow in under there So all done very, very lightly and I'm just darkening with the same colour because of course it was the colour I used for the um, C. Just darkening it there because this is a shadow and I don't want her to disappear. Um, so can you see how very, very gently I'm doing this? The slightest touch makes quite a big difference. Um, and now I just want to put a little bit more light into here. So I'm going to take this, the shorter end of that and just give that a little bit of scrape and then find my cream, give it a little bit of a, just a slight touch, um, again not a great deal of, of, of pressure being applied. So pressure, the variation in the pressure is very, is very important to me. Um, don't know how much other pastel artists do vary their pressure but um, I know at the new pastel school it's one of the things that Nell Watmore and I really do talk about quite a lot just give that a couple of harder um, marks now I'm just going to move on to her hair 
with this this is quite a dark brown which I don't seem to have again on my um, color chart here now I've definitely slipped there that is a definite slip but what I can do with that because there's only one layer on is I can just take it down a bit and I can actually rub it back what I've done is I've just cut with my scalpel I've just cut a little bit of rubber to just be a little bit more precise with that now rubbers aren't just there to um, get rid of mistakes you can actually use them as a drawing instrument as well so little little kind of um, oh, I don't know how to describe them curly hair marks this is one of my Conte crayons just give that a little bit of light and then I'm going to bring in one of my um, sand colours So these are little dibbly dibbly marks um, and all the time I'm actually looking, I am looking at my reference to see where the light is hitting her head. Right so now I'm going to go onto my Conte crayons and I'm basically just using these two. Um, I have no idea what um, numbers they are because they just get broken and put in the box but they're very similar in colour to the paper. That one in particular is very similar to the paper. It's like a raw sienna. And that's more like a burnt sienna. And they're great, absolutely great for undercolours, for skin tones. Now, being mixed race, Yasmin has got dark skin. Um, so these, these kind of predominate. But if I was doing somebody who had very pale white skin, I'd still be putting these underneath. I'd just then soften them over with a, a more of a lighter flesh colour but because this picture is about um, bright sunlight I'm not really going to um, I'm not going to put a flesh tone over them I'm just going to leave them as they are and with the colour of the paper showing through and back to the skin tones I'm just really just giving them a bit of a hatch I'm not colouring it in I'm just wafting dusting a little bit over because this is this sort of picture is it's very much less is more I'm, I'm doing as little as I can to just give a bit of a hint now I'm onto my pastel pencils so I have a dark brown one here which is great for a little bit of texture a little bit of a darker dark over here but again can you see I'm, I'm not making hard lines with this I'm just doing a little bit of a hatch. The hardest lines I'm doing are where I want to describe a little bit of shadow, like the little bit of shadow there under her it, her trousers. You might be able to hear <laughs> you might be happy to hear the noise of my neighbour's horses. If you're wondering what the noise in the background is, it's horses. Okay, it's not me. I actually think it's really nice doing recordings in my studio rather than in a, um, in a, in a proper recording studio because uh, it's a bit like real life. Okay, the other pastel pencil that I'm going to use a little bit of is this kind of um, what I think of as a red ochre. I use Faber-Castell pit pastels, pit pastel pencils. And I've also got a little blue pastel pencil here which it's quite nice for hatching a little bit of detail. 
because it's quite close to the sea colour. So what these pastel pencils do is they give you a little bit more refinement um, than you get with your pastels, but they don't show up very well over a few layers of softer pastel. So you can't really use them much for detail, they're more for kind of gradual changes. Um, brightening up some of my lights again because as I'm sure you find when you're working with pastels um, as you work on one area sometimes it, what you'll do affects another bit so I just patiently come back and touch it in again and as well as the lights I'm just going to add some reflection so I'm just using the same colour that I used um, above, same colours rather, put another bit of that in as well. And as long as they're directly underneath, you can, you can be quite loose with what you do. I'm gonna put a little bit of light in the water. Right, so let's get the fishing rod in. Now, um, I, I want the fishing rod to be slightly more at an angle than it was on the original reference. So I'm gonna use my pastel pencil, but you can see it really doesn't show up very well. I have to press quite hard. Give it a little bit of an end there. And down here, I'm going to come back to using um, my actual pastel. So that's this is a cream. So I'm just going to draw it in with a cream, and then I'm going to put some um, pink over. And again, I'm looking at where the light is catching it, slightly dipping in the water, so it'll make a little bit of line in the water. And then there's some pink in it, but because it's see-through. I'm not going to um, I'm not going to make very strong marks with it and I'm going to put a little bit of the pink that's in her clothes in it as well. To me, water is a combination of lots of different colours, but the important thing is, as you make the marks, you think about the surfaces that, of that water is like. So this is slightly, slightly rippling, so I'm making rippling types of marks. Um, I just want to have a little bit, a little bit of something a bit darker down here to um, anchor it down. So I'm going to leave it there so that it's just an impression, a fleeting impression of a little girl um, in the bright sunshine um, with a really large fishing net. I hope you've enjoyed that and you found it useful. If you have any questions, please get in touch with me via my website and um, take a look at the book and happy pastelling.